Hi, in this closing slide, not that it's the last one, but in this near to the end slide uh, for customer economics, I now want to raise the vision hope idea that maybe uh, branch by branch, your company could become an excellence freak. You know, we read these business books about superstar companies going back to In Search of Excellence in 1982 by um, those two uh, well-known McKinsey authors. It's been a whole group of books since then about, you know, best practices, whatever. In the book, Good to Great, that came out in 2000, uh, the research team identified 11 companies out of 1,400 that outperformed the stock market by a lot over a 15-year period of time. Actually, these were 11 companies out of a universe of 7,000, but they, not all 7,000 7, had 50, all the years of publicly traded stock to, to, to work out. So it was a very small percentage. In the 90s, a fellow named David Birch was trying to figure out where jobs came from in America. And he did notice that in almost every industry, about 3% of the companies were gazelles that were growing about 20% per year or more. Uh, as a general rule, they were growing two to five times faster in their industry, uh, presumably because they were perpetually innovating, doing cool stuff, whatever, and they were creating new jobs. Um, service uh, quality uh, research finds that, again, persisted with about 4% of the population of, of companies are perpetual innovators, uh, about 5% of the of the the players in a given industry can have maintain a uh, high sustainable uh, growth return on investment year after year after year uh, this is actually borne out uh, al bates for years has done uh, uh, performance uh, financial performance reports for tra different trade associations i think at the peak he might have had about 40 different channels he was doing this for and if he put them all together in a sea of, of companies he had a magnitude of about ten thousand. And if he put rank them on a, on a return on investment viewpoint, he found out that the top 5%, sure enough, uh, were the same five year after year after year. They were all right there, just continually making this high return on investment. They were running about four to six times the return on investment of the bottom, 90, 95%. And they were also growing faster in the industry rate. So we, we know that there are these sustainably successful companies. Uh, and we can read all the best practices uh, and in the guidelines and so forth. But the problem is none of those are telling us what our number one historic, most net profitable group of customers, niche of customers are at a branch level. And none of these things will tell us for that particular niche, what are the six, seven, eight metrics that add up to service value uh, equation for that niche. None of them tell us the common profitability popularity items that that particular group of customers is buying so we can tune that strategically and have the best foundational service metric of all, which is, which is one-stop shop in-stock fill rates. But now you have a prescription for how you can do that, and it starts to say, you know what? I, I now have a plan that gives me hope that I could become a high performer. Now, if I can become a high performer, how do I get all my employees to be part of that solution as opposed to, you know, just kind of doing what they're doing and not being part of the problem, but certainly not being part of the solution. And that brings up the next slide. Thank you.